give you grace, we give you honor, we give you power, we give you adoration, Lord. Let your name be exalted Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, as your people have given, Lord, I pray that you bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those that gave them your, your tithe, Lord, I pray Lord, that you replenish back to them the strength to give you more, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. I pray Lord, that you will double your tithe, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. I pray Lord, that you will triple the offering, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. I pray, Father God, let, let them come next Sunday and they, they will give you full course and glory to give you honor and praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Those that did not give, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you give them the power and the strength to give next Sunday, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Let us become faithful titles in your house, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Let us be like Solomon and David to be crazy givers in your house, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. So shall it be, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Living souls in the house, praise the Lord. Good afternoon, church. My name is Paul Luba, and I'll be doing announcements for today. So first, I want to welcome everybody to what Hope Cathedral, CAC Wilson Norfolk. I pray that this week God will favor you and bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Are there any new worshipers fellowshipping with us today? Okay, we need to do more evangelizing. <laughs> the days and hours of service are as follows. On Sundays, we have our Sunday service from 10 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. On Wednesday, we have Bible study from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Friday, we have our brain surgery from 7 to 8 p.m. Also, be reminded that we are doing fasting and prayer for our women and for the people of church, for God to move in our lives this year and for the remainder of this year. Yay. Also, this week, we are hosting 2018 CAC Wilson Convention. <laughs> it starts from this Wednesday all the way to Sunday, and our services will be held at Sheraton Hotel. All hands are needed to support for the success of the convention. Please, if you're not doing anything and you want to help the church, whether it be monetary or physically, like helping people carry Bibles or driving people, transporting anything, please let us know and you'll be greatly appreciated. Also coming up, we have our monthly Kashanti Revival. That will be from August 30th. Oh, sorry, July 30th, July 31st, and August 1st. Next up, we have our birthdays of the month, starting with Lawrence Ayatoa from July 21st. <laughs> Sister Martine on July 23rd. And lastly, Pastor Mrs. Sandra Buachi. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, I want to close with our Overcomers Creed. I serve the God of possibilities. This is the home of possibilities. 
all things are possible to him that believe. And because I believe, I have the upper hand in every situation. I am healed, I am blessed, I am an overcomer. This is who I am. I am an overcomer. With the clap, I'll pray. Welcome, Pastor Seth Mawashi. It looks like we have number one is too loud thank you it looks like we have uh, a lot of preachers and a lot of great men and women God is raising among us amen, amen. let's put our hand together for our youth one more time I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you to pray there's something that I, I, I have every grace to say. You know, when you read Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter, there's a statement God made. He said, on the seventh year, he declared that they should make what is called release. And I've lived this house seven years. Can I hear seven years? Seven years. So, there are people here that I believe today, God, through the grace he has given to me, they will be released in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. He said, when it's seven years, make a release. And I've, I prayed to God and said, God, what message will I preach? He said, this is your seventh year. See, yes. In this July, see, yes. He said, make a release. By the authority that is in the blood, anyone that is going through any insult any kind of mockery may god intervene in your matter in jesus name i i think you're gonna pray before even we start a service please turn your bible to the book of isaiah 25 chapter the 25th chapter verse 8 look at it everybody you're gonna use it to pray the 25th and verse 8 he said he will swallow up death in victory Amen. and the lord god will wipe away tears from off all faces Amen. he said all faces Amen. not only one person all faces Amen. and rebuke of his people shall be taken or take away from off all the earth for the lord has spoken I want another translation that talk about insult and mockery. There's an insult and mockery there in another translation. Look at it. Any translation you have that is insult and mockery. Who have the things can read it for us? Anyone with a translation that say insult and mockery? Nobody has that translation. What is your translation, say, girl? Verse 8. Yes. Uh -huh. he will forever. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Somebody has that translation. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord will wipe away all the tears. Say all tears. All faces continue. He will remove his people's disgrace. He will remove his people's disgrace and what? From Amen. I still am lacking one translation that say all insult. I like that translation. He will swallow up death forever. Yes. He will obey Lord, he will wipe all away tears. Yes. Let's say all insults. All insults. And what again? All and, and all mockery. Say all mockery. all mockery. If you are in this room though, if you are here, the, by the sea, I was reading on Friday to the people that came for the prayers. It was Nebuchadnezzar who didn't have authority like me would tell the witches, I'm going to kill all of you. And all the witches were afraid. All the diviners, every one of them was afraid because 
a king called Nebuchadnezzar who understood authority, used it, and the people were afraid. So me, I, I have more grace than Nebuchadnezzar. Did I hear? Yes, I hear you. That's it. So here, any insult that any one of us are carrying, anyone that being mocked at because of one thing or another, by the authority that is in the blood, may the Lord remove it in Jesus' name. I say, may all your shame be removed in the name of Jesus. All your tears be carried away in the name of Jesus. Hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this. In Deuteronomy 15, when you read from verse 1 all the way to 12 or 13, God said, in the seventh month, seventh year, make sure you make a release. Now, one other thing he said, there shouldn't be any poor among us. If you are here and you are still struggling, may God intervene in Jesus' name. Whatever area the devil thought he has got you today, you are released in the name of Jesus. I say you are released in the name of Jesus. You are released from barrenness. You are released from lack. You are released from trouble. In the name of Jesus. Hear this. Hear this. In Deuteronomy 21 verse 5, he said, he said that the sons of Levi, they are the ministers of God. God has pushed them there for them to resolve any controversy. I am here as a servant of God. Any controversy in your life, any argument in your life, today by the power of God, I declare an end to it in Jesus' name. He said, you are chosen to end in the controversy you are going to pray for somebody say by the blood of jesus any controversy in your life any argument in your life today by the blood i put an end to it now come and pray 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 for him pray for him that controversy must come to an end that controversy must come to an end. That controversy must come to an end. That issue must come to an end. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I got to control myself or we might not go. Because, listen to this. When they were troubling Moses and Aaron, God said, I have to put this controversy to rest. He said, tell everybody to bring their rod. And whose rod that bothered will be chosen as the leader. So God said, for me to put control, this controversy to an end, or this argument, is for me to prove myself. May God prove himself in your life. <laughs> That those who are mocking you will begin to say, God has done him great things. I say, May God prove himself in your life in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Quack, come, let's sit down. Sit down for a second. Sit down for a second. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. I bow before you. I will sing again. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before you. To sing choir, let me hear you. Glorious God, beautiful. beautiful King. There is no one like you, Jesus. Sing again. Glorious. Glorious. He's worthy to be lifted. Give him a song to love by Hallelujah. Sing it. Abba. Worship you. Abba. You are, you are, 
Thank you, Father. Abow. You are what? For the last time. Abow before. Worship you, Jesus. Abow. You are. You are the glory. Let's go one, two, three. We bow down and worship. What is his name? Oh, I believe there's somebody in the house. I want you to sing again. We bow down and worship. I say, what is his name again? Start again, again, we bow down and worship. We bow down. Oh. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh. We bow down and worship. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, 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 His word is Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Come on, come on, worship him his worthy. Yahweh. 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 Say Yahweh. Yahweh. Why sing it? Yahweh. Sing again, Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Come on, put your hand together for the King of Kings. You know, only time you come to church. Don't let it be like, okay, this half pastor is going to go, the choir is going to come like this, and they're going to go like this, and then everything. No, think differently, and always trust God, that God will move in your life in Jesus' name. I don't know whom I'm speaking to, or God brought you here for this message, so please hear this. On the seventh day, God rested and he sanctified the day and blessed the day and he rested and on the seventh year he said that everybody whoever you are he said whoever that is on you let them go that is the word of god so what i did this morning please hear this i don't know what you are going through what you are facing in life but if you came here that you want god to touch you i believe he would do that in jesus name Jesus. Whatever you are seated, please bow down your heads. Sing, you deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor 
and the all Lord we lift As we walk, as we pray your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. And the honor. Lord, Lord, we lift our hands. Whatever you bow down your heads, begin to talk to him. As we praise your holy name. For you. You do miracles. miracles so there is no Jesus. No one, no one, no one, no one, Jesus. See a great. You do. Oh Jesus, there is no one else like you. For you are great, sing for you are great. You do. There is no, no man, no woman, no woman being like you, Jesus. You are great. You are great. You are great. Can't tell the boss a like you. There is no one else like you. Our Father in heaven, take the glory this day. Let no man go back the same. Heal the minds of your people. Set us free from any kind of oppression or depression. Anything that is causing your people not to become. Lord, we delete it in Jesus' name. Do what no man can do. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody say amen. amen. Let's put our hand together for this beautiful crowd. Hallelujah. Mission number seven. Thank you. Praise God. I started a message a couple of days or weeks ago about the mind. Some of the things I said is what people say about you doesn't defeat you. It is what you think about yourself that defeats you. I also said, according to the book of Romans 12, verse 2, he said, if you have a renewed mind, you will live a transformed life. Many a times we are praying that God make certain things available to us, but we are not ready to change our mindset. The, the, so long as you continue to think the same way before you became Christian, you think the same way, there ain't going to be any change. So please, I want you to help me and follow with what God has given to us all. Because this is not for you, only for me also. The mind is an important thing for every one of us. So God, before he released Joshua, he showed Joshua everything. He said, Joshua, look at the land. Look at everything. I have given them to you to possess it. He said, there's no human being that will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. I thought that would, that would be good enough for God to stop right there. But God said, no, Josh. Even though I've given you all this land, for you to possess them, you must have a daily exercise. Can I hear daily exercise? Of your mind by you having the word of God meditating on the word so that you'll be able to possess them you'll be able to prosper you'll be able to succeed you'll be able to deal wisely if you don't meditate upon the word he said to Joshua there's no way you're going to be able to prosper or succeed or deal wisely human beings are so complicated 
they are not easy to deal with it is easy to deal with animals and other things but human beings before you are able to deal with a human being as a leader you must fast and pray and trust god that this human being how do i handle him or her because some 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 people you must want to call you must show tough love to be able to keep them there are some people you must dog them anyhow. You must carry them and begin to pet them and begin to take them. Because human beings are very delicate. They are very delicate. I mean, if you are going to handle human beings, God said for you to succeed and to prosper and be in good success, you must meditate on the word of God. And it's not only a daytime or morning time. Oh no, every day, every night you must meditate upon the word of god that is one thing that many of us don't do if we do it is just because maybe i heard the message today i got to try it it must be your daily intake every day i got to open this book and look into it and hear what god has to say i quoted last week in the book of ephesians 5 verse 25 one of the things the Paul, the apostles wrote, thank God Apostle Paul wrote about marriage because Peter had no clue about marriage. Even Jesus didn't talk much about marriage. It was Paul that was able to bring certain things for the church, apostolic message for the church. And one of the things he said to men, he said, men, husband, love your wife. It is a command from heaven. And he continues saying something. In 26, he said that because your wife you must present your wife to yourself the only way you can present her as a that beautiful bride to yourself it's not the garment we buy for her or you do that it is you washing her with the washing of the water of the word by so doing you become you have a wife that can submit to you at any time any man that has no time for the word of god there's no way the wife will even have time for Women are very also delicate. It's not easy to deal with women. They can, some women can switch at any given time. They have a temperature, temperature change. Oh no, you can be happy this moment. In a minute, the woman has switched. Say, ah, it's not the same woman we're talking. Everything has changed. So for you to be able to have a wife where she will say yes sir do whatever you ask her to do you must soak yourself in the word of god because that is the only thing that can bring women to their knees that this is what god is saying but if you don't manifest them they they read it they know it they see that you don't have what it takes even when you say to them about the word of god you don't you know you, they know you don't know it so please, men in the house, study to prove them that you know. Can I hear? I hear you. The word of God. So I, I took you to Philippians 4 verse 8. And that's where I'm going to take you back. Go there. Philippians 4 verse 8. He said, finally, brethren. I like people when they are so precise. You see, this is my last thing I'm telling you, Philippian church. What sort of a thing that are true? And that is it. We, we started what sort of things that are true. Now many people dwell on things that are not true. And that is the problem that many people have. Because the enemy will tell them, look at yourself. You are 29 and you are not married. And they now begin to think that that is the truth. And they begin to let that thing, 29, you are not married. 29, you are not married. So this young lady who is 29, I mean, to me, she's young because I didn't marry when I was 29. Some say, oh, because you're a man, so you don't, people. no. So for the fact that you're not married at 29 means God has the special man because according to the book of Proverbs 18, here what it is, 18, and he said that women or husbands get favor when they get married to a wife. I'm paraphrasing it, 1821. He said that, we find favor so for god to show that man favor he has to prepare you to give it to a man god he wants to show favor because not everybody god wants to show favor can i hear, hear you so uh, at times when god is not giving you a husband it's not that you are growing and god has not seen it he's because the men are not available who god wants to show favor God doesn't want to show favor to everybody. He wants to show favor to certain people and he wants to give his daughter to somebody that he can show favor. 
So don't let me dwell there. So here, Philippians 4 verse 8 said, anything that is true is what to meditate on. Is it true that God has made you the head and not the tail? I didn't hear you. Yes, sir. Is this true that you are more than conqueror? Yes, Is this true that the devil can never come close to you because he's under your feet? Yes, These are the truth you meditate on, not the, the one that he's telling you. The devil came to the garden to tell the woman, has God said? As if God has not said it. Has God said that uh, if you eat this tree, you will die? That's where gossip started from. Anytime you want to see gossip, gossip started from trying to twist the truth of God's word to be a liar. So they said, has God said this? And the devil was able to convince the woman to say, oh, God says this thing, but uh, this and that. The devil said, don't mind God. He's just joking. It's not true. If you eat it, you won't die. And she saw it and she said, mm, this is good for food. And her desire of they became so strong. And she stretched her hand and touched that which God said don't eat. And ate it and gave it to her husband. So that time men are complaining, oh, this is my wife, my wife. I said, the man was there when she took, because the Bible never showed that, oh, Adam was in the bush somewhere. And so when uh, Eve took it, he didn't see it. The Bible said she took it and gave it to the man that was over there. And so the man too ate it right there and there. Hear this. Always meditate upon the truth. My sisters nearly destroyed me when I was growing up. And I think I've shared with you one time. They look at this handsome prince and they say, this guy is not handsome like our other brothers. You think it was a joke? You think it didn't affect me? You think I have the boldness to look at people at their faces when I hear my sisters are saying this? Oh no, it wasn't true. You know why I know it wasn't true? Because I had a wife who said, what a handsome prince. Amen? Amen. But my sisters said, oh no, this guy wasn't. And it affected my, my ability to raise my head up for many years. Until I went to Nigeria and this beautiful lady said, what a handsome prince. I thought she was joking. I say, are you talking about me? He say, yes, you're handsome. I say, I. I ask her, do you love me? Want to marry me? She say, yes. I say, you got a husband. So all these things that, okay, go ahead and pray. Is it God's will? I didn't need that. I need someone who loves me. <laughs> and I had one. So, so if you see me like this, I've never taken her to see, okay, only one of my sisters that she met. One day we'll go to under the orange tree. It's too far. That's why I've not taken it. And you see all those witches that say this man will never be nothing. You see them. I'm saying this to you to let you know that there's what is called the truth and that's what is called lies. If you dwell on the lies, because nobody told me this thing that what these people were saying was not true. But I build my life on that negative. It's okay, they are the truth. And it affected me big time. Hear this. So I said, if the devil comes to tell you that you cannot have a baby, is it true? No. Oh, you, you will never be pregnant. Is it true? No. Oh, you, you will never be married. Is it true? No. These things are not true. So don't dwell on it. Don't meditate on those things. Because, see, I said something. The mind is not the brain. Don't forget that. The mind is not the brain. The brain is the processing center. The mind has what I call the thought, the memories, the beliefs, the attitude, the imaginations. That is what makes the mind. Now, anytime you have a thought, it will now go to your processing center, the brain, to begin to work on it. And that's why it elicits what is called the chemical imbalance or balance. There is something that anytime your mind begins to go through some, some thinking and some, some it processes, it brings certain things out of your body. So some people, 
their sickness can never, never be healed. Not that because the doctor have not given them the right medication. It's because their mind is fighting whatever they are supposed to have. Because immediately the brain begins to process it, the brain now begins to react on the body. And now instead of the person to be healed, the person remains sick. Because the thought, which is the mind, has now come to the brain, and the brain has processed it and said, you, you can't be healed. Remain like this. So many people know that God has not healed them or touched them, but because their processing center, uh, the brain has been also polluted by a mindset, so it is now degrading them or affecting them negatively. Hear this, everybody. So I said, number one, meditate on what is true. Number two thing I want you to meditate upon is right. Meditate what is right. Meditate what is right because what is not right is wrong. Don't forget that. What is not right is what? You didn't hear me. I said meditate upon what is what? Right. What is not right is what? So don't forget it. If you forget everything I say, anything that is not right is wrong. So I should never detect, meditate upon what is not right. What sort of things that are right, or let's just put it, what sort of things that are just. If the thing is not right, please, you don't meditate upon it because God reward those that walk righteously. He said he's not a respecter of person. Acts 10, 34, 35. Peter said, now I know that God is not a respecter of any man or any woman, but in every nation, anyone that fears him and do what is right and do what is right. These are the people God is interested with. If what you are thinking is not right, drop it because it's not right. Anything that is not right is wrong. So I don't care whatever anybody is telling you. You say, oh, this is it. It's not right. It is wrong. They say, oh, you are ah, this thing. Can't you see? Oh, it is not right. It is what? Wrong. So never agree with the devil because that is what they want you to do. Please, look at it again. Meditate on the right things. Because if you don't, it will build up some things in your brain that can affect you. Listen, there's a young man that did some stupid stuff. His name is called Cain. His brother made a sacrifice he's also made a sacrifice you know the story the book of uh, genesis chapter 4 when we read from verse 6 there bible said that when he finished the sacrifice god now came to him and he said why are you rot why are you angry why are you, you, your countenance has fallen he told him that look if you did it right you would have been accepted now if you don't do it right he said, sin is at your door he's knocking at your door and he, god told him that you must rule over sin and then that sin will catch up with you because immediately your mind becomes come so we have some thought negative thought guess what it can bring you down child of god please help me your mind there are i said it last week and i want to repeat it there are 80 years old men that are working in walmart and there are 25 years old men that are multi-millionaires god didn't choose it for them they didn't want to punish the old man or make that small boy to become no they are choices what they allow it into their brain. Praise God. So please, this guy called Cain decided to have a thought about his brother. And the thought graduated from just an offering to murder. Please deal with your mind nobody's going to help you to do that the reason why god told joshua deal with your mind because if you don't deal with it you can even think your wife is insulting you when your wife says, hello what happened say, what, what is he talking about so please hear this see let me let me say this the next one is this this right thing let me let me come down to say this if you have a husband or a wife and women please help me if your wife is not meditating on the right thing help him if your wife is not meditating on the right thing help her because without they meditate on the right thing it affect the family one way or the other there are things you don't need to pray 
because of our mindset that's why we have tailored everything into prayer i got to pray and your mind is polluted it's so dirty to the extent that it doesn't even receive nothing from god how do you think god is going to change his mind he is not a magician god is not a magician and he's not going to do it because you are weeping because some people if weeping could change god i god will have changed long time some of us know how we have wept oh god don't do this to me he said when he finished weeping come back and you finish weeping, you wipe your tears, you go, oh God, this thing is still there. Is a deacon, a jagged that was asking, what about when your hope is lost? I said, Christians don't have hope lost. A Christian, no Christian must come to a point of your life. He said, I have no hope. No, there's nothing like no hope. You hope until the end of your life. So please, is what you are meditating, is it right? If it's not right, then you have no chance because the enemy want to destroy you. Please help me. Let, let, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. The next one is meditate upon pure things. Something that is pure. If what you are thinking is not pure, it can defile you. If it's not pure, Many marriages that have collapsed today is as a result of the woman has something that wasn't pure that she was thinking about or the man was having something in his mind that was not pure that he was thinking about. See, I'm a man, so let me use men for, for example. If my wife speak negative things to me, are not pure things they are not wholesome they are not there's no purity about what she's saying to me guess what will happen to me when i go out i may meet somebody a, another woman that will be so uh ready to make me happy and so oh, hello maybe he let's say the person knows me oh hello pastor how are you today and i have already received words that were not pure from home and now i am somewhere and somebody now making me to relax and telling me about good stuff and the things i'm hearing from the individual is all some things that are building me up oh oh pastor i like your suit and i like those comments when somebody says, oh yeah thank you and the person said, I like your seat. So many marriages that collapse or women committing adultery or men committing adultery is because they put something in their mind that was not pure and they, they, not, they couldn't handle it and they miss it. If you see a man committing adultery, not that the man is sexually predator, that he want to have sex with every woman. No. It's because there is something that makes push people to go and have sex. It's not just because of, oh, now I want to have sex by myself. No. It is something that they, they have been hearing that is now pushing them to do what they ought not to do. So the same thing like women. If a woman commits adultery, it's as a result of maybe she has been hearing something from the man that she couldn't take it no more and say, okay, I want to show this man this impure words. I can't handle it. Please, your mind is an important thing. Meditate on what is pure. Is it pure? There's a young man that's so obsessed with his own half-sister. He was obsessed with the sister. His mind was, I want to have my sister by all means. Hey, what happened? Oh, he did everything to have this woman, but he couldn't break through. So he had a friend, a, a cousin called Jonadab. He said, why is your countenance so falling? He said, oh, I want to have my stepsister. And I know the king will not give me to her. And the, the man said, Come on, this is an easy thing. Something that somebody took many uh, weeks falling sick because he couldn't know how to go about it. Under one second, somebody with a bad mind could tell him, oh, do this and that, you'll be fine. So there are people that you, go, you don't hang around them because if you hang around people like this guy that we are talking about, Jonathan, he's able to tell you some things under one second. Very crafty, very cunning. They can tell you something that will make your mind 
accept what they are saying quickly. And that is the, the downfall of this young man. That was his death. He didn't know it. He has been thinking about what can I do. His mind, he, think, he thought this, he thought this, he thought this, he thought this. None of them worked. But the, man, the young man came and said, why are you doing this? Oh, I wanted my stepsister. And I don't think the king will give me. He said, ah, that's an easy thing. On that one minute, he said, that, lie down and sleep as if you're sick. And tell your daddy to let your sister come and prepare something for you. And when he finishes it, in, then you can do it. Now, listen, listen. This was something that was orchestrated from the pit of hell through this man. So this impure words was able to pierce through this young man's mind and made him to meditate upon it because first he was meditating upon how to have it and so that has obsessed him and now this thought or reasoning of this guy was another thing. So he was ready to do anything. Please. If you meditate upon impure thing, you will end up doing things that will not help you or bless you. Impure. It is not right, but the guy said, I'll have to keep it. Paul said, meditate upon this thing day by day and night by night. Because that will help you. The word of God. If you don't meditate upon the word of God, you will not see things that are pure. I like Matthew 5 verse 8. He said, blessed are the pure in thought or in heart, for they shall see God and the goodness of God. I like those translations. I read many translations anytime I'm reading the Bible. I don't read King James only. I read maybe 10 of them. And thank God there's uh, an app that when you put one translation, it can give you all the English translation of it at a go. So I read through all of them. So if King James say, blessed uh, be he that pure heart, the other one will also put more flavor in it that makes it different from the first one. So here, blessed are pure in heart for this, shall see God. If you want to see God, have a mind that is pure, clean. I See, see my hands. I've said it one time and I'm going to say it again. The way you see this, this is what I have toward everybody here. One of the things that no father can do to his children is to hate any one of them or think negative. Oh, I don't want this my son or daughter to succeed. That's not a father. And so that is how I have toward everybody here. If only you prove yourself that, oh, pastor, I can preach. I will give you the microphone. That is me because, see, God knows who is in charge. What did I say? So I have no mind of, oh, if I give Brother Frank the microphone today, he may overtake me. God is not a man. Is everybody here? Yeah. Every time have a pure mind so that you will succeed because God will never be with a man that hasn't got a pure heart. He abandoned them. Remember the scriptures we quoted last week. Romans 1, 24, 26, and 28. The, these are three groups of people God has abandoned them. According to my translation, today, he has abandoned them. People who have all kinds of desire. Their thoughts are all polluted. So God abandoned people like that. So how do you think that people like that can pray to God and God will answer? Look at it again. Romans 1, 24. Please put it there for me, my boy. 124, he said, Wherefore God also give them up. Another translation, give them up. Another translation, God abandoned them. God refused them. He now said, Okay, I give them to their own uncleanness. And all of them came from their mind. Look at 26. 26. He said, For this cause God gave them up unto thy affection. God gave them up. Look at 28. Because the women decided to sleep with other women. It's against nature. But you see, that's what we do. So God said, I give them up. This is the last one. I did not likely thank God in their knowledge. God give them over to a reprobate mind. I said reprobate. The word reprobate, you can also see it as a, 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 a castaway mind. So God give them a mind where it can never change. So let them continue doing that to hell. Your mind is the most precious thing. Some people can buy some clothes about 1,000, no, oh, maybe people don't buy 1,000 clothes here. But at times people can buy clothes of $200, $300. And if you ask them to buy a book about their mind that will help their mind to become better, 
they think is you 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 are you're in the wrong place. How do I pastor wants me to buy a book and it's gonna cost me uh, forty dollars? How? And you can buy clothes that can make I was asking my daughter one time, I said, See, I'm not praying that it come to you, but you have a choice. The choice is one if you have to lose your hair and uh, maybe your hair and your your finger, which one do you want? Oh, let my hair go, my finger, I don't want it. I said, okay, what about if you have a choice, your mind and your eyes, you're going to lose one of them. Which one? He said, ah, I prefer to lose my eyes than like, my mind. When people lose their mind, you can't help them. Doctors can't help people whose mind, they, give, they continue to give medication, 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 but their mind is gone. Their mind is gone. Because the thought that fly through them and go into this brain, it is something that doctors can help. So God said, the only thing that can help you is the word of God. So that you don't think anyhow. So let me quickly go on. Go back to Philippians 4 verse 8. Let me close right now. I want to close. Maybe I'll continue next time. I want to, I want to stretch you up. So when you go home and think about what I just said today. So I continued yesterday, last week one. I said, think what is true. Think what is right. Think what is pure. Meditate upon those things that are pure. It will help you to make you to become that man or woman. The next thing I will talk about next week is think about prophetic word that God has used anybody to prophesy because the Bible says to do that. Do that. Please, wherever you are sitting, there are some people in this room that your mind is not correct. You need God to help you. It's not that you, 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 are, you are sick mentally. No, your mind is okay. But your thought, your reasonings, it does, it's not helping you. It's not helping you. Now, somebody has done something to you that it pains you so much that what you are thinking, what you are meditating upon it, it is not what God has for you. Please, drop it. My sister said all these things. It, I took it for almost 40, about 30 years of my life. I spent 30 years thinking about what my sister said. To every while I go, here comes the ugly guy. Took my my the, the the grace that god has given me the power everything i couldn't even understand when i take a microphone when i was a, a young guy oh lord anytime i take a microphone it's like a fire coming from down i was speaking with so much boldness but when it comes to what my sister said and i hear that i said jesus oh man why am i like this one time i was even thinking about committing let me end my life it's not worth it to the extent that because my sister said this so when i grew up and i see that oh god so that's why i anytime anybody want to try a little bit of my wife you are touching something you don't understand so when i, I got angry when you touch her it's not because of anything because she broke something out of my life that many women couldn't break can i hear I hear you so please but I'm begging everyone here. One of the things I keep telling, even her and all my children, never call anybody names. Because immediately you call the person's name, it will go to his subconscious mind. It will go to his, his brain. And the person begins to process it. And it may stay there for life. Because it takes, it takes 21 times of repet repetition of something to remove the first one. But who is going to take time to repeat the 21 times of the negative thing you have said about the individual? So never say anything negative about anybody. Don't call anybody name. Don't call them. See, in my village, they used to call, if you have a, a your lips is a little bit big, it's a look at his lips. It's like they use it to sweep the floor. They insult people to that extent. Look at his lips. And until I came here and I found that people were even injecting their lips to be bigger. And I said, what kind of situation that I was going through? That if you are, your lips is big, he said, they're using, as his lips is like they're using to sweep the floor. And the way they say it in, in tree language, you don't want to hear it. It is terrible. 
And if you have a big nose, I see if you are the only person that you 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 are you the only person that looking for air. I say I tell them that. 